And as they are, and it's a true story, everything in the film is based on events that actually happened. And as this group of soldiers is coming off the beach towards a railhead, these very kind older people are out at night giving them blankets, hot tea, sandwiches, food, comfort, words of welcome. And there's a blind old man who's handing out blankets. And he says, well done, lads, well done, lads, well done, lads. And some of the British soldiers who are shamed by their defeat come past him and say to him, all we did was survive. And he said, that's enough. Because if they hadn't got those troops back, they would have had to have surrendered to Hitler then. But because he got the army back, Churchill could fight on. All they had to do was survive. All we have to do is survive. How do we survive? By faith in Jesus. And then we know that we do more than survive. But that's all we have to do. We just have to have faith and trust in him. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. He will accomplish it. Therefore, this is what the Lord says to the king of, concerning the king of Assyria. He will not enter the city or shoot an arrow there. He will not come before it with shield or build a siege ramp against it. Satan will not get into your church. He will not get into you or your family. You will not fall like Samaria. It will not happen as long as you keep your faith and trust in me. I will fight for you. I will defend this city and save it, verse 34, for my sake and for the sake of David, my servant. I will defend each and every person here, each and every faithful church, for the sake of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will defend it. You don't have to do it. All you have to do is have faith and trust in me and thereby obey me. Now look at this. That night the angel of the Lord, this is Jesus, the angel of the Lord, Hamalak Adonai. It's a very, very specific Hebrew term. It appears many times in the Old Testament and it, in, it, in Old Testament and it always and only means Jesus, he who dwells at the center of the throne, Hamalak Adonai, the angel of the Lord, went out and put to death 185,000 men in the Assyrian camp. One night. That's a lot of death. Don't mess with God. Those who are playing in his church, building up their own shrines, building up their own popularity, more worried about their own positions than the flock. Those people are playing with holy fire. When the people got up the next morning, there were all the dead bodies. Mm, not a good smell. So Sennacherib, the king of Israel, broke camp and withdrew. I don't blame him. He returned to Nineveh and stayed there. And one day while he was worshipping in the temple of his god, Nisroch, his sons, Adramelech and Shareza, cut him down with the sword. And they escaped to the land of Ararat. And the Sharadon, his son, succeeded him as king. His sons. There is a special place in hell for Satan. When God finally banishes Satan to that special place in hell, he will be the least powerful being in hell. This fantasy that Satan rules a kingdom in hell and that he is high on some sort of satanic mountain and ruling all the demons, that is not the truth. He is going to be the lowest of the low. And all his fallen demons and all the fallen souls of fallen mankind will for eternally 
mock him and curse him as the least powerful of all those damned in hell. There's a special teaching on that, which we obviously don't have time to go into this morning. That is what the one true God does, will do, and will eternally do for those who remain faithful to him. We are called to keep faith in him, to trust him, to teach his word fearlessly, faithfully, and in truth. We are called to walk in the power of the Spirit, to teach his word in the power of the Spirit, and to live and act by the power of the Spirit. We are called not to fear Satan and the world and fallen man. We are called to only reverently fear the one true God. If we do that, Satan will never besiege us, will never shoot his arrows in our church, will never cause the citadel to fall. And the name of the son of David will continue to be upheld and proclaimed to the lost without. Let's bow in a word of closing prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all who you are and all that you are. We thank you, the Lord and creator of all in heaven and on earth, in the universe and beyond. We thank you especially for each and every person here this morning, an example of your faithful remnant. We pray for each and every person here this morning, that those of us who know you would be encouraged and empowered by your love and mercy to humbly and gratefully and faithfully and courageously bring your word of knowledge to the world without. And we pray for those here this morning who may not yet know you as Lord and Savior, that they may come to understand that there is only one way to escape the imprisonment of Satan, and that is through the eternal freedom of the gospel of Jesus. We ask for your forgiveness where we have sinned against you. We ask that you would lead us in a renewed walk with you in the days, weeks, and months to come. We pray for your blessings and mercies on our church, on our leaders, on our land, and on each and every one of us, unto the glory of your precious and eternal name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.